welcoming everybody. Thank you so much to the DC Ani chapter for being so welcoming to me and for inviting me to speak about my incredible experience volunteering this summer in Armenia. So I knew during the war last fall while I was in school that I was guaranteed 100% going to be spending my following summer in Armenia finding any way that I could to volunteer. It was just a desperate need that I had within myself even though I had never been before. And I started looking even in January for what programs were available for me to secure housing in Armenia and spend the entirety of the summer giving back and volunteering wherever I could. The AYF summer internship program was the perfect experience for me because following the completion of my degree, I was able to gain professional work experience in a multitude of organizations related to my field, as well as meet other Armenians my age, and for the first time in my life, get to experience the incredible culture and landscape of our homeland. My initial placement was with the Women's Resource Center Yerevan, which is a small office in Yerevan that does incredible work that honestly I didn't even know existed. So some of the uh, projects that the Women's Resource Center acts out, uh, they offer workshops for young women about uh, self-empowerment, about self-esteem, about understanding your identity as an individual Armenian woman, as well as offering programs and discussion areas for adult women to discuss perhaps traumas they might have experienced and hardships and express themselves in a safe space. They as, as well, uh, the project that I was helping with was the Shuhel Crafts Project, which is a project that helps disadvantaged women in Armenia secure independent income by creating uh, handicrafts such as crochet work, embroidery work, and different products that can be sold through the Women's Resource Center to initially secure them income and then with the end goal of hopefully uh, helping them create their own independent business and continue to secure that income for themselves. So the work that I was doing for them, uh, using my skills in editing and things of that nature to help them work on their English texts and informational pamphlets that they create, as well as newsletters. I help them recatalog their library. As you can see on the left, that picture there, I meticulously put new stickers on everything and made a whole lot for them about their wide, uh, expansive collection of texts concerning all sorts of things related to their women's movements, such as theory and history and things of that nature. And I was a part of the, well, I was running pretty much their Shuhal Crafts social media campaign trying to make their, uh, pro make their project more visible and hopefully gain more um, interaction with the products they were selling. And as you can see on the screen, there are some pictures of different products that were being sold by the Shuhal Crafts Project. And while I was working with the Raymond's Resource Center, I just could not believe the incredible opportunity that had been presented to me to give back um, and who I got to interact with while I was there. Um, while I was meeting the women working with the Shuhal Crafts Project, I got to meet women that excuse me, women that were um, displaced following the Artsakh War and firsthand hear their stories. And I worked with an incredible group of women who tirelessly, tirelessly commit their entire selves to finding women in Yerevan that need help and securing them resources and, and doing everything in their power to improve their quality of life. It was an incredible opportunity and one that I will never forget. I will never forget the people that I got to work with while I was there. I also got to take on uh, a second internship uh, opportunity with the National Library of Armenia, where I was working with a very small team, uh, essentially as a research assistant, uh, we were creating and discovering data about reading habits um, and the ways that people use the library in Armenia, which actually, they don't really. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, while in America, libraries might uh, be at the very core of our communities and they're the centers of different ways you can access resources and all sorts of incredible things. We grow up using them. In Armenia, it's actually pretty difficult to get access to the library. It's difficult to get a library card. It's difficult to use the resources of the library without such a card. And pretty much following the Soviet times, people are distrusting the libraries. They don't like to read. I did a lot of reporting about how reading is very in decline in Armenia. So a lot of the work that I was doing was helping to create new sets of professional development materials for librarians in Armenia to improve the system, modernize the systems, as well as discovering and creating materials for gathering research on children's reading habits for the purpose of improving children's uh, library literacy. So if you might not be aware of what library literacy is, it's essentially the ability to walk into a library and understand uh, how you can navigate it and what you can do to access certain pieces of information. This was work that was incredibly close to my heart. It mattered very much to me because, um, as we all kind of understand, it is, it is very, very vital that individuals are able to understand how to access information for themselves, self-educate, we always understand there's work that can be done for the education system in Armenia. Um, and it's just very important that all individuals in Armenia understand how they can 
access information, how they can navigate the wide plethora of resources that might be available to them. So I was just um, honored that I got to be a part of this work and that I got to learn more about the usage of libraries in my motherland. It was incredible. Um, so I'd also like to talk a bit about, while the, the work experience was so crucial and I'm so grateful to be doing that work, obviously, like my fellow Andrea Joganes discussed, um, living in Armenia is the second half of it and it's just as, just as incredible. It's the second incredible part um, of the EYF internship program. So like I mentioned, I had never been to Armenia before, and actually I was the first member of my family to ever go to Armenia. Uh, and this experience changed my entire relationship to our motherland. Obviously being Armenian in America has to be a choice. It's something that you have to put effort towards. And, and as we continue to have generations of Armenians born in America, second, third, fourth, I just think that it is so incredible that the AYF offers this program, and I think it is vital that we continue to create opportunities for our young people, or people of any age, to be able to go to Armenia, because it takes it from something that exists in concept and in culture, and turns it into an incredibly vivid, colorful reality. Everything about getting to live in Armenia, from getting to practice my rusted Armenian skills, getting to interact with local AYFers and Hemagans, and just getting to live in the city and be among the incredible landscape in the different regions of Armenia. It, it, it took the fire that existed in my heart for working towards Haikha and, and, and working for our country and turned it into a bonfire. It was an incredible, incredible experience. Um, picture here are pictures of um, us visiting, like Andre Bogaris mentioned, the Sistian military base in Sunni. Um, we got to meet face to face our young soldiers that are fighting for our lands. We got to dance with them, eat with them, see where they sleep. Kind of in the middle there, you can see me dancing with my my young Nare. That was awesome. We got to do a slow dance. It was lovely. Um, on the bottom right, it's a picture of me and my fellow Hungarian Zaron Margosian at the top of the lowest peak of Mount Arakats, which I didn't even think I'd make it to the top. So that was really awesome. <laughs> Uh, and these experiences, getting to see all different places, getting to be at Sevan on the 4th of July, like Sevan, um, getting to raft, whitewater raft, through um, the rivers and mountains of Lodi, the region that I'm named after, getting to zipline in Dilijan, these are things that I wasn't sure that I would ever get to experience. And every moment I was there, I was just constantly, constantly shocked by the realization that I was in the place where I came from, and that the places that I was exploring were my inheritance, and they were my heritage, and they were what separated me from the other people that I live with as a diaspora in, in America. And it, it just, everybody, every young person that I've talked to since returning from Armenia, I beg them to find a volunteer opportunity, to sign up for the AI internship program, to do what they can to get themselves to Armenia, because our skills as diaspora Americans, there is a place for them there. Anybody, regardless of if you speak Armenian, how well you speak Armenian, if you have family there, I personally don't, there is a place for our work to be done. There is something for you to do and they need our help. And realizing that I had a part to play in that was unbelievable. All I want to do now is go back. I hope I get to you as soon as possible. Maybe next summer. That would be awesome. Um, overall though, I will never forget this experience. I wouldn't have traded it for anything and I was so grateful to get to be there the summer following the COVID-19 pandemic and of course following last fall's Arctic War. It was unbelievable. And I'd like to end on this message. It is. Um, a message that is inscribed on one of the walls at the Sisyon military base. Uh, I'm going to recite it, forgive me for any potential mispronunciations, my reading skills aren't flawless. Um, but Jova Wortan Arans Haira Serutian, Haira Serutian, Norina Inch, Marumin Arans Kogi, which essentially translates into those without a passion for Armenia in their heart are like a body without a soul, which I'm sure we can all write.